guys. Hi guys. Welcome back to our French lives. And today is adapting to life in France part, part two. two. <laughs> so, so I think today we're going to talk about and explore the topics of internet, healthcare, healthcare. and animals. <laughs> so, All important to us. <laughs> yeah, it's a wide range of topics. <laughs> So internet, you're probably wondering why why we're saying about internet, but that was a culture <laughs> shock. <laughs> yeah, internet to us was extremely important in the early days, um, and we well, we were very used to in the strong internet in the UK, weren't we? Yeah, um, you know, fiber underground and and things like that, or a, a multitude of um, suppliers to to choose from. Isn't yeah, there? I think maybe because we both lived in, well, you lived in a city originally and I lived in a town, so maybe, you know, it might have been different out in the country in England, but mm. um, we were definitely used to uh, nice, fast, fast <laughs> broadband. <Yeah. laughs> so I think when we got here, we were kind of told what the existing provider was, weren't we? And then yeah. it kind of turned out for us in rural France, in Normandy, there's kind of one main provider, isn't there? Yeah, um, and 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 that was kind of what we were left with. So, well, I don't, I don't. I mean, I certainly presumed it'd be like the UK. I thought, oh well, you know, if if that provider doesn't work out, we can you know choose <laughs> choose someone else. But uh, that's not the case. Unfortunately. We we know the internet is more developed in country. Uh, uh, sorry, in the cities. Let's put it that way. But certainly for us in rural Normandy, we had one provider to choose from, didn't we? Yeah. And. Um, we had to go with them and I think in the early days we were getting four, if anyone knows anything about internet, which we know very little, but we were getting four megabytes, weren't yeah. we? Well, I think I think I know more about internet now since <laughs> yeah. I lived in France than what I ever did in the UK because in the UK it was just a case of, well, it works and, you know, it's loading everything up quick, so... But I think but four megabytes, really, it's not even... You're if you're playing a film or a video on on social media you're struggling to kind of watch it aren't you really well it reminded me if anyone ever remembers the days of dial-up <laughs> I, I felt like I'd gone back in time back, yeah. <laughs> back to the days of dial-up internet so yeah so you set the internet up didn't you originally when you because obviously you were here for a few weeks before me so you got mm -hmm. the internet set up and and of course you have to have a landline that's like <laughs> You know, a given. A really, a really popular <laughs> thing to have in France, isn't yeah. it? Which Every, is quite old fashioned. Everybody in my rings your landline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rings your landline, and yeah. So the internet. Well, like I say, it was just going back, back to back to the early nineties. I think if 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 it was just for us, you know, we maybe could have got away with it uh, eventually. Uh, you know, not having to work on a laptop, just you know, have, having to use it to browse the internet or whatever. Um, we could have got away with it. Um, so yeah. all our lines come in on um, the overhead overheads, uh, so they're not dug dug down. So again, that's a great risk for us because you always hear about the farmers knocking people's lines down, and I think ours were down for one point six weeks, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah. for a business, it became it became very apparent quickly didn't it that we just yeah. we needed something else and it used well, to keep me up our, at night our, didn't it and worry about it our first year when we had guests and of course these four megabytes have to be shared between us and the guests it was between we, we sat, it was between 12 at the time wasn't it including us yeah i think we sat in silence didn't we sometimes we, we couldn't have the laptop turn on our, on. all our uh, internet based <laughs> things off but i mean we never got complaints, which was good, but we did get marked down for our internet, which well, is I absolutely think... not surprising <laughs> well, because it was horrific. <laughs> I think you used to, like you said, you used to keep it up used at to night. keep me up at night. The worry about it, but I think in the end, well, the, the final straw came, didn't it? When I think it was last, not the January had just gone, the January before, and we had nothing. And yeah, for that six weeks, I think I rang Orange every single day, and. Uh, Eventually, I think it took six weeks before we found, <laughs> found the fault of the lines that had just been randomly yeah. knocked out. I think one somewhere. of their most popular things to do must be to give everyone a 4G tower. So <laughs> <laughs> absolutely every English person that we know that's with Orange has been given a 4G tower. Um, again, if you have like a thunderstorm, everything has to be unplugged because otherwise it fries 
the, yeah. the internet box. So, you know, again, it is quite old technology that they're working with, um, certainly that we've experienced rurally. Um, so I think we just, you got to the end of the t- your tether, didn't you, ringing them <laughs> daily just to try and ask when we were going to get our internet back. Um, mm-hmm. and anyway, I think we kind of, we looked around, didn't we? And we actually found um, a satellite internet provider um, yeah. that's becoming quite popular in, in rural France. And that was an absolutely life-changing, <laughs> life-changing. experience, <laughs> wasn't it? It was, I think that was the number one biggest relief we've had um, running mm. a business since yeah. we've come here, really, wasn't it? Not have to ha- have that concern um uh, you know whether our guests were getting internet or not <laughs> yeah i suppose the thing the thing was um when you've got you know people coming from all over the world and a lot of people you know in this you know just expect century internet. Are used to faster fast mm. broadband and they come here and you know even we even we were sort of shocked weren't we by how little <laughs> little internet but literally yeah. now we've found this other provider it's it's changed and uh, yeah. ho- hopefully uh, the business saver as well. <laughs> well, I mean, the way the way we set it up, didn't we? We've got multiple buildings, obviously, the four buildings, and then we have like a mesh system that sort of transmits the internet yeah. signal all around the grounds. And obviously four megabytes, <laughs> everyone was getting about, what, uh, what's Half the math? <laughs> a megabyte per house, which wasn't great. But now with the with the satellite provider, we're getting two to 300 megabytes out, which, which we yeah. still cannot believe it was actually works out cheaper than what we were paying orange because we could get rid of the landline that no one but that we never (laughs) ever had plugged in anyway um and it just means that we've got stable internet that's like we can share around all of the the houses and and the the main point is that sarah can now sleep at night (laughs) (laughs) but that yeah that was definitely a part of um sort of a culture shock wasn't it getting used to yeah yeah we know it's different in some in the french cities but certainly for us we had a big it was months worth of worry going through that didn't wasn't it until we (laughs) sorted that out yeah so moving on healthcare. yes again that again. was you know quite a it's, we're st- i think we're still getting used to that now aren't we the fact that you can actually well the other day let's put it like this i went for a blood test and you don't have to wait you don't have to book you just walk walk in get a blood test literally in and out in five minutes it's just a completely different way isn't it well when we talk about france being old-fashioned for internet I I feel in France they are so much more progressive and developed for healthcare. Yeah. Um, I think just going back when we first came to France, obviously we came on um, visas and whilst we were, you know, you don't go into the French health system straight away, you know, until you get your job and, and that kind of thing sorted and get then start paying into the system, don't you? So we had to come with um, health insurance. Yeah, which was quite pricey really, wasn't it? For the first, for, well, yeah. it was for a year just till you got set up, but... Uh, uh, yeah, our recommendation yeah. is very much to shop around on that because yeah. we've seen people's prices vary wildly. Ours weren't too bad, but again, we didn't have sort of any pre-existing health conditions. Um, but uh, as far as we're aware, the visa requirements still make it compulsory for you to have health insurance because obviously you go mm. into a country that they want to make sure you're not going to be a drain on resources. Um, so definitely we would suggest to, to look around, um, shop around on health yes. insurance. Yeah, the, the French healthcare system is obviously completely different to the UK because obviously, you know, we're used to the NHS in the UK. you think of it as privatised, wouldn't you? Yeah. In, to a certain degree. Yes, yeah. I mean, you still pay, you pay Social Security, um, what's it, your staff, Social Security yep. money, don't you, to tax. Um, which, which will pay you into the system. Yeah, and that pays, I think, 70%. And then you top the other thirty percent up with a private um, healthcare. Mm. So we were on the health in. Um, we had our health insurance for the first year, didn't we? And yeah. then we were going through the process, setting up the business. Well, at the side of that, we obviously knew it was important to get our health care sorted. Yeah, I think you when when you set up a business in France or you become employed, you're automatically then enrolled into the healthcare. Um, healthcare system and that's when when you get what they call the, your car vital yes isn't yeah it? yeah so as harriet was explaining before so you have your cart you end up with your car vital which would impre- in replace your health insurance 
And yeah. did you say that it covers, because I'm not quite up with it, 70% of your, any sort of health costs that you have from that point. But then the other part that you would get is something called a mutual, which is like sort of the private healthcare part of it, isn't it? That yes, you're paying yeah. to, that there's multiple different levels. I think there's about eight different levels, isn't there? Where it will pay sort of 100% of your, the, the other costs, the healthcare costs or you get ones that go into 200% as they class yeah, them, doesn't it? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> no, I think we've got the basic one. Yeah. But in a nutshell, you move from your health insurance to a carte fatale and mutual process, don't you? Which yes. kind of yeah. means that any of your health care that you go in for, depending on what um, mutual you have, you, you kind of get all of your costs reimbursed pretty yes. much, don't I think, you? I think, uh, it when... holds a small... Yeah, was it you said they back. the holder I think a euro? About a euro, yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, that depends. It varies between people. It just depends what kind of mutual you have um, set up. But that means, again, in, in France, there's something when you were talking about doctor's appointments. There's an internet, uh, there's, a, there's a website called Dr. Lib. Yeah. Where, if you can imagine, it, you literally go on and just say you have a health concern, um, you know, for X... And so all you would do is you just go in and actually search the doctors that are specialists in in, in that field yes, of medicine. Yeah. And then you can book an appointment with them. And uh, I just can't stop talking about it enough as to how <laughs> amazing I think that is compared to how unfortunately the NHS seems to be struggling a little bit with with things. But I mean, like you said, you, you needed a blood test. Yeah. And literally, we were in, got the blood test and the results were out. the same day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no, and you don't have to have a doctor's referral either. If you if you've got some worry, um, you know, or if you just all, want to get checked out, yeah, you can literally go on the website, type in, you know, which doctor you need, and book an appointment like that, and you're literally in and out. You we, know, we're just so impressed with it. Aren't I just we? don't think we can get used to it, can we? Because uh, you know, if we've been for an appointment, we're like, don't we need a referral? Don't we need to wait? Don't yeah, don't we need to, to wait like six months? <laughs> but I mean, it's just for me, it's an example of preventative medicine at its best mm. because you get the opportunity to get a blood test, for example, and it'll identify if there's any sort of areas for concern. Yeah. I think when we got the sort of the test back, it gives you like the range of what the normals would be that you would expect and. And then obviously it doesn't come to just you. It will go to your doctor who um, who you've registered with. Registered with. Yeah. So, you know, any concerns will then be picked up with them and dealt with. But we just think it's absolutely amazing, don't yeah, we? Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so you, don't, and, you don't have to wait and, you know, wait and see your doctor. You don't have to worry wait about for, something for months. months. Yeah, and you can't get an appointment. You just literally, I mean, I, 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 I went to the doctors one day. And uh, I said, oh, can I make an appointment? Thinking she'd book it for like, you know, next week. And she went, oh, you can go and see him now. And I was like, <laughs> now? Are you sure? She and like, I think yeah, see him now. <laughs> for, for us with prescriptions as well. I mean, with with in combination with your carte vitale and your mutuelle, prescriptions are just about free. Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. I know they're not always in certain circumstances, but in I th- I'm not sure how much. Are they about £16 in the UK now, maybe? Uh, yeah, something like probably, that yeah something but the practically the free well they're, co- they're covered they're covered in by uh, your mutual and your um, and your social security so you don't pay that additionally on top like in the UK you pay your national insurance towards the NHS and then you pay for your prescriptions on top it's literally and I don't think that was something we could get used to either <laughs> <laughs> you wait in there to pay and the like no that's it <laughs> I mean, again, I know obviously we pay like a monthly fee for the mutual, but for the healthcare that's provided, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. Just, yeah. It's so completely worth it. And then obviously, you know, anything untoward, if there's an accident, you have an accident or something, then, you know, you're covered by your mutual. And because the hospitals are in effect privatised, just yeah. things are done straight away. Um, I know during COVID, they designated in France, um, in our region, certain COVID hospitals, didn't they? So mm. that other hospitals that were non-COVID could carry on with the day-to-day operations. And, yeah, and again, it's just... To, didn't have to close. So and... much more forward thinking when, when it comes to the healthcare. We just, we, we can't be 
you know, can <laughs> sing its praise them enough really. <laughs> As to yeah. how we've seen that. So that was like a complete shock. I think yeah. we had heard, hadn't we, how good or how much better the healthcare was, but I don't think we realised actually yeah. how good it is. And that was definitely something that we've, <laughs> you know, it's just so positive. Yeah. Yeah. We just, yeah, we love it. Yeah. So and animals. Then, animals. <laughs> <laughs> a topic close to our heart. <laughs> Seems we've got so many. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot to talk about here. But <laughs> I think, one, yeah, the first thing we wanted to talk about was bringing your pets over to France. Yeah. So any yeah. pets that you've got already. Um, I think at the time, <laughs> we had our four dogs, didn't yeah. we? So um, obviously they were going to come with us. Um, so those four guys needed... Uh, animal health certificates yes they did which you didn't you sorted out didn't you because i think we went originally to our fir- uh, our existing vet, vet and then once we wanted charge, to charge the earth <laughs> charge a fortune and we thought gosh we've got four dogs here i'm pretty certain it, the, when we asked them i'm sure the price for those four dogs was about 600 pounds yeah at least yeah something maybe like that more, I think. so what we learned from that was that you can actually shop around and you're not tied to your existing vet to provide those animal health certificates, which is great. I think we ended up travelling an hour, didn't we, to someone who um, who had given us a, a, a fraction yeah. of the price quote. Um, and then we spent, I, I think I took them, yeah, I yeah. Took them down, didn't <laughs> I? I was at work and I was so, like, where have you been? And you went, oh, I've been on this big long journey just to get some cheap... <laughs> Cheap uh, animal health certificates. Well, it was well worth it, though. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, because we had the four, we, I spent a good few hours there while she went through each dog, done the f- checks, the history, obviously checked all the vaccinations. Rabies. I think that animal health certificate's about 15 pages per dog or something crazy like that, isn't yeah. it? And that France are quite specific. If things aren't filled in, if there isn't a stamp from the vet, if there isn't this and that, they will turn turn you away at the border. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we, we did... You'd, Obviously, you know, you could look on Google and see who's been given, um, you know, positive reviews for animal health certificates. But that was, again, we would say for that one, shop around um, because we saved several hundred pounds on that. And then we got the animal health certificates that we required. Um, I think I drove, again, I drove them, all four of them over in the car, didn't they? Because, didn't we? Because you were driving a van over. (laughs) Um, Had to have rabies jabs as well, just while. Rabies jabs, yeah, yeah. and obviously up to date with the vaccinations and... Was there a worm in treatment that was required, I think? I think that's... uh, No, I think that's if you take them back to the UK. But anyway, you know, it's your vets are well... uh, you know, well informed as to what's required, but we, yeah, again, we would say for that one, definitely shop around. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Um, and then the flip side to that is a pet, pe- uh, a pet passport, a pet <laughs> passport. Um, so if you wanted to return to the UK with your dogs and you live in France, then you can get something called a pet passport, can't you? Yes, which we thought would be a lot more expensive, but I mean, our vet quote does about like thirty. Euros. Yeah, about thirty euros, and then um, again, it just means like you can... just said, you have to get a sort of tapeworm treatment if you take them back to the UK. Uh, couple of days before you take them back yeah, within five days i think is isn't it? it yeah so but that's... It, ba- it basically means that you can travel with your pets a lot easier once you're based in france with a french address um and it means that you don't have to keep getting the animal health certificates to bring them back um you know they've got to be registered in in france for the for you to do that and, but yeah. again it's it's the easiest we've never had any of ours we haven't got a pet passport, have no, we? Because we didn't want to take <laughs> the four of them back. Because that would be like hard work. But certainly, that would definitely that's definitely the way to go if you want to yeah. travel back with your with your pet. And I think once you've got the pet pet passport, you can just use it as many times as you want. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. You just so. obviously have to get. I think was it um, in France? It's rabies every two years is like yes. the, the yeah. thing that your dogs require. Um, but then, obviously, your passport is just, like, filled in to, to update that, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So, um, oh, that, another big one for us was vets and insurance. Oh, yes. Yeah, when we got um, here, we didn't... Well, I can't remember... Because we had four dogs at the yeah. time, and all of them had insurance, because, obviously, health care, <laughs> animal care in, in England costs an absolute fortune. Doesn't yeah. it? Well, um, I think, I think so just, they before all we, had... just before we came over, I had Ralph, Ralph, Ralph the pug, pug at the vets, and he, he'd eaten a mushroom or something <laughs> as, as poorly. 
and just and it was just like an overnight stay, wasn't it? And treatment. I think it was like five hundred pounds, and I was like, and because of the emergency vets as well. Yeah, like, yeah. So, but one of the big things that we'd seen was, oh, you move to France and you cancel your pet insurance straight away because vet in vet care is really cheap and we were obviously hesitant on that weren't we yeah. but again we did we did that pretty much straight away right. didn't we so we cancelled all four of our dogs pet insurance and and it is the case pet care in france is so much cheaper yeah i mean we've had them at the vets a few times you know nothing major thank goodness but it's literally just for the vaccinations that doesn't it yeah, yeah tend to be um, but ralph's been when he's Decided he was sick again, wasn't he? Yeah, it? consume something he shouldn't. <laughs> and again, you know, it's nowhere near the price. I think, well, I think, when, or well, I think when I took him, it was like 60, yeah. 60 euros just for him to be seen and checked over. Compared to the £500 I paid in the... Well, I didn't pay the insurance, paid it. But we got UK, through the insurance. But, yeah, so it's such a massive difference. I mean, that's it's certainly the case for... It worked for us... Possibly because the because we live on the estate, the dogs don't tend to leave the estate because we have enough ground to con you know to mm. always walk them on on the estate here, and obviously all the other animals that we have have been you know treated That's for right. you, know, you know for what's what's required. So we for us it works it works for us doesn't it? Yes, yeah. They don't really come into contact with any other any other dogs no, or animals. Not at all. Hours, so. Yeah. So that certainly works for us. We certainly saved money on that. Yes. Um, and when, then if they do need treatment, it's just a fraction of the price. Yeah, that's and I think, I think that's what encourages us to get even more pets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so moving on nicely. Because yeah. <laughs> think... it was so cheap at the vet, we thought, why not just, you know, So I think we ended up, farm. we got two two cats, didn't we? Two Originally, cats first. Yes. So <laughs> in France, they, unfortunately, there seems to be quite a... Um, a lot of cats in cat shelters and stuff, mm. doesn't it? They seem to breed. They breed a lot, unfortunately, in the wild, and people haven't um, had them um, sterilized, sterilized and yeah. stuff. So we thought, right, well, we're always going to get our cats from shelters. Mm. So I think we got our first two, didn't we? Yes. And then about six, nine months later, we got our second two. Got two more. <laughs> <laughs> so the four dogs now then were joined by four cats. Yeah. Um, so they obviously came sterilized and vaccinated. Yeah, and we got so. the chickens. Yeah. Then then came the chickens because we wanted to have eggs for our guests. Yeah. And then we and then we thought because uh, at first we were like, oh no, the cats and dogs weren't going to get on, and they started getting on, didn't they? And then once we got the chickens, I thought, oh my goodness, is, are the cats going to get the chickens? I think it but, was more that the dogs. But it, <laughs> there was a couple of incidents when a chicken might have hung out of the mouth of Ralph the Pork or uh, Bella the Golden. Um, but, but yeah, it was the, just a couple of times, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but the cat, the cats, the chickens are actually the top of the pecking order, <laughs> aren't they? The cats and dogs are actually scared of the chickens. There's a couple of chickens that have like got a grudge against a couple of the cats. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I think Isabel gets chased by Elizabeth. Yeah. the chicken quite a lot doesn't she so yeah we we would say pecking order is definitely the chickens then the cats and then, and then the, the dogs, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's lovely is that we can be in our back garden and they can all be milling around yeah, um, all and it's just really nice isn't it it's yes. just dead calming relaxing um and then I think Star, the, the youngest golden retriever, she she kind of just watches over the flock kind of thing, doesn't, yeah. doesn't she? We just catch her out just sitting there watching. Uh, but it's just really nice that we have them all sort of interacting. Yeah, and it's it's nice because the dogs, um, well, we have, the dogs keep foxes away. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we've we've experienced that definitely, haven't we? It's just, yeah. I think, the, the smell that they give off, um, it just tends to... I think we've only ever seen one fox on the grounds, haven't we? And yeah. I think I saw it on the camera and I scared it off with a... Better than we had on the camera. But, um, yeah, so touch, touching wood, we don't have that much problem with, with, with foxes. With foxes. Yeah. Um, all, all of the kind, those kinds of animals, like, look after each other. Yeah. Um, and I think we were thinking as well that the, the other wildlife that we get on the grounds is just really nice. For us rurally, we've seen deer haven't yes. we well, uh, i see saw a small cushion which is a, a pig um <laughs> and like a wild boar and it was on the ride on mower and it's all he saw with its little bum and tail waggling as it ran away <laughs> and it literally it was like literally the size of a sort of a french bulldog 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we've we've got ducks on the lake and moor hens, and we have a stork that visits us every so often. Yeah. Or we, is it a heron? It's a heron. heron. Yes. Yeah. I um, think we've, we've got two ducks at the minute, and we think maybe one's... One might be... She might be um, sat on the eggs. Yeah. Because he's been sat on his own a little bit, the mallard. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, we had two lots of ducks, um, ducklings, duck, last with ducklings yeah. last year, didn't we? And we have pheasants that you can hear, which sound lovely around the grounds, and you see those every so often. Rabbits, hare, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're usually up in the sheep. And field. then obviously we've got the sheep, yeah, which we bought purposefully for grass cutting. Which <laughs> again, they're fantastic because they do do the job brilliantly, <laughs> yeah. don't they? Um, cut the grass, and it means that we don't have to rely on um, a farmer. A, a neighbour that was cutting the grass previously, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, he was cutting the grass, then taking the bales away. Um, but for us, we just wanted to be self-reliant, really, didn't we? So yeah. we've built up all the fencing and we have like eight sheep, eight, ten, ten sheep, sheep. <laughs> ten, ten sheep now that cut that grass nicely. And yeah, just, they're really, they enjoy they're really it, friendly, aren't they? Aren't they? They're friendly. I think we're hoping to do sort of uh, sheep feeding with, yeah. with the sort of any youngsters that come um, visiting this year because they, they are, especially when there's food, they're dead friendly. <laughs> I think I think as well, I think it's nice because people who come from cities or towns mm. uh, generally, you know, probably haven't seen sheep. I mean, I grew up with sheep, so to me it doesn't... It, <laughs> it's quite normal kids, to have sheep in Some the of the garden, kids that but... come are so excited yeah, at first, aren't they? Because yeah. they're like, we want to see the sheep, we want to see the chickens. Well, I've never seen dogs or cats, haven't they? Because they come, you know, yeah. they're in high-rise buildings in cities, you know, they don't have pets. So it's quite nice, isn't it, for them to yeah, interact like with the animals. The simple little farm that we've got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ever-growing farm. <laughs> so that was animals. Yeah. I think we just wanted to touch on really what we kind of loved about, love about France. Yeah. And I think for me, I think it is the laid back, what we talked about in part one, sort of, you know, we were saying about the two hour lunches, but it, it's just a laid back atmosphere, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. so chilled, you know, nobody's rushing around or, you know, it's like... You know, you've had to get used to it. But I'm still nothing, not quite used to it yeah, if you want tradesmen <laughs> because then it's like can be frustrating. But it is very. Uh, There's a lot less stress. Yes, isn't yeah, there in this country. Yeah. You know, it, you know, you know, the tradesmen's going to turn up. Probably not today. It might not be tomorrow, <laughs> but they're going to turn up. You know, so it's it's just a lot. It's a lot more chilled. And I think coming from a life where we was like, you know, high pressure jobs, rushing about, you know, up early. You know, it's it's just such a better better life and the french people are so friendly as well aren't they yeah you know everyone we come into contact with just really friendly really helpful if you, as long as you get over that language barrier yeah <laughs> which you definitely <laughs> you know which which is definitely possible yeah. um but and then there's also an expat community as well isn't there yes, um, yeah as much as you want to sort of be involved in it there's always english people that live in the region um that, that it's good for sort of help and advice really isn't yeah. it and you know you can go to them and see if they've experienced what you've got and or you go to the mayor and yeah. <laughs> tell them your ask, problems yeah, ask for help there the mayor is quite helpful but yeah i mean so we're not working full time we're no. working for ourselves. We <laughs> kind time. of, if you looked at it on paper, we work for seven months, then get five months off. But <laughs> well, it's, it's like not like a holiday <laughs> at all. We never, we never stop, but we love it, don't we? I yeah. love having stuff to do. Well, in the, in the summer, I mean, you know, we have changeovers to do, but generally we're in, the, we're sat in the garden, aren't we, by two o'clock? Until sort of ten o'clock at night. Love that yeah. side of sit it. With all, sit with all the animals. Yeah. And it's also so much warmer than the, than the UK. <laughs> so yeah. we just love it, don't we? Yes, yeah. It's definitely been, you know, a, a better, life changer. A best, you know, best decision we've made, isn't oh, it? Yeah. yeah. We definitely rec recommend for you to do it as long as you plan it and, you know, you've got an idea what you want to do. It's just completely yeah. changed our lives. Yes, I don't absolutely. Know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think well, that's about it for it today. Is, yeah, thank you for... Thank you for listening. listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. Yes. And we'll see you next week. Okay. <laughs>